now author of the book Superpower, The Amazing Race Between China's Hare and India's Tortoise, which is out now. Thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Well, I've got to ask you, considering your success already, are you a tortoise or a hare? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would say a tortoise. Oh, you would? <laughs> I would say, I think, I, think I, I, just, I just certainly believe that slow and steady uh, is, is the way to be. I mean, spectacular is easy. It gets everybody excited, but perhaps often doesn't last uh, as much as slow and steady does. Well, you know, in this book, you're really uh, taking a look at these two countries, India and China, and where they stand economically and, and geopolitically. Um, but you're, you're looking at it, where are they going? And you sort of, the, the, the title indicates sort of that there's a, there's a finish line. There's not technically a finish line, but they are in a race. Right. If the race were to end today, who wins? If it was to end today, uh, China's ahead. No, no question about it. I mean, I think it would be even, uh, it would be puerile to even suggest otherwise. But the, 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 the argument that I'm trying to make is that if you look at them in, in quantitative terms, China is four times India's size. So a lot of very intelligent people have said that India is now irretrievably behind. My argument is that that, that is certainly not the case for a, for a couple of reasons. If we were to just compare China in 2000 with India in 2010, just a 10 year difference, China was a, a, about the same size economically but institutionally much weaker. India is institutionally a much stronger democracy and a much stronger economy and about the same size as China was just 10 years ago. Therefore, the gap between the two countries is less than 10 years. And therefore, uh, if you look at China and India as a four is to one equation, then I think you've, you're getting it wrong because it's not a four is to one equation. If India was to do a few things right, and if China gets trapped in the kind of uh, political uh, hubris that it may be getting trapped in, then the fact is that India would begin to grow faster uh, than China and the two uh, could begin to converge. Therefore, I say the odds are not 4 is to 1, but the odds are 50-50 in the race. You describe these two countries, uh, you give them sort of a character and a personality, and I, I, in that China is, is, is more aggressive, uh, maybe more willing to fight, if you will, and India is a little bit, or has this image maybe, they're a little more passive, sort of the, and this is my word, sort of, uh, British tea drinkers, no offense to the British. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, no, so I get there, it. There, so there's sort of, there's a difference there. Uh, how much does that play into to the way that they are now trying to fit themselves into the world economy? In the 200 years that both countries were under colonial rule, they had very different experiences. Mm -hmm. The Chinese, for that 200 year period, were virtually fighting. They were virtually in a war with all the colonial powers, whether it was the UK, Germany, France, the US, they were completely always fighting. And when I, mean, when I say fight, I don't mean struggle, I mean actual war. There was war happening uh, uh, very much uh, throughout those 200 years. In the case of India, India really had only one colonial power to deal with, Great Britain. Mm -hmm. It didn't have any of the others. And, the, and there were no wars that were happening through very large periods of this 200 year a domination. There were wars, there were skirmishes, there were battles, but there was no countrywide war that was happening. And the British therefore brought in large elements of their uh, political structures, their governance structures, their administrative structures, their school structure, the English language. All of this got into India in those 200 years. So the experience of the two countries in those 200 years was so dramatically different that today my sense is that that is also getting reflected in the way they go about doing business, mm -hmm. in their governance structures, in their attitudes, in, in the kind of passivity versus aggression uh, adjectives that you use, which, which in a sense are right. Because I think those 200 years gave China the aggression uh, and, the, and, and the sort of uh, we'll get even with you mindset. On September 15, 2008, the world is now taking a much closer look at China and certainly at India. You know, uh, interestingly, the Lehman collapse, according to me, was the swivel moment for India. It, the world swiveled and looked at India. And there, is a, there, is, there, is, there are very good reasons for why that happened. See, China was growing at 13%, red hot. Uh, and when Lehman happened and, and world export markets collapsed, China's exports collapsed. So China fell from 13% to 6%, halved its growth rate. 
uh, almost 20 million people were thrown out of jobs. There was widespread social unrest. And then China came in with that huge stimulus program and, and, and infused credit into its economy. India, on the other hand, was growing at about 9.5%, but fell to 6.7%. It fell just about 3 percentage points, much less than China. I think the world noticed that. India then bounced back from 6.7 back to 8.5. The kind of pain the Indian economy went through was very limited compared to what China went through. And that's largely because parts of the Indian economy, the rural economy, uh, the domestic consumption economy is completely insulated from the world, does not depend on either the American consumer or the European consumer. It has an innate strength of its own. I think the world noticed that. I think the world also noticed that there were no bad debts in the Indian economy. Uh, none of the Indian banks, not even one bank had to be recapitalized. Not even one bank had uh, uh, a situation where there was a run on it. So I think the world certainly saw that while both these countries are growing very fast, one of them the one that they knew a little bit more about, China, suffered a much higher episode of pain uh, and had to put in much more effort to come back, while the other country seemed to almost dip down and come back uh, almost naturally, without any external sort of adrenaline or external support or external crutch being needed. And I think that changed uh, discourse around India and China as far as the world was concerned. And I think the world began to see India with newer eyes uh, after India uh, bounced back so relatively painlessly, uh, without relatively much smaller crutches. And therefore, it's, it's there in the, in, in, in the stock markets, you know. China stock markets are still 40 percent off their peak. India's have gone ahead. Mm -hmm. India has not only bounced back, but gone ahead of the 2008 levels. So I think the world saw the innate strength of the Indian economy. It's Raghav Ball, superpower, the amazing race between China's hare and India's tortoise, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much.